The movie opens with a young boy named Vasily Zaitsev being taught to hunt by his grandfather. Tying their horse as bait, Vasily's grandfather teaches him to stay as idle as a stone in order to go undetected by the wolf. As if on cue, the animal charges towards the horse, and, now frightened, Vasily is commanded to pull the trigger. With a lot of courage, the trembling little boy does as told, unaware of how this significant moment will shape him as a person. The scene then changes to 1942, when the world is still facing the terror of World War II. The Nazis have taken over Europe and are now moving towards the oil lands of Asia through the Soviet Union. However, they have one obstacle on their way, the city of Stalingrad, protected by the soldiers of the Russian Red Army. As the battle in the city gets more intense, a backup force is sent on its way to help the Red Army. Among the soldiers boarding the train is Vasily, who has grown to be a skilled sniper. He closely notices the civilians being chased away to make room for more soldiers. After a short ride, they reach the city and are pulled into boarding boats to reach the front line. By the looks of the battlefield, it is obvious that the Nazis have overpowered them entirely and the backup soldiers are being sent on a suicidal mission. When the army realizes this, some soldiers try to flee, only to be shot dead by their own mates for deserting. The Germans take this as an opportunity and open fire, injuring half of their enemy before they even get a chance to fight back. When the boat finally reaches the dock, the surviving soldiers are immediately grouped into pairs of two, where only one of them gets a rifle. Vasily only gets a few bullets and is asked to jump in to help his mates. After separating from his pair almost immediately, his only way to survive is to stay close to the ground and go undetected. Seeing that their chances of winning are slim, a few of his fellow soldiers try escaping, only to be killed by their own people yet again. In no time, the battleground is covered with the dead bodies of the Russian soldiers. A few moments later, a car enters the grim scene, but instantly gets hit by a tank. Commissioner Danilov of the Russian army jumps from the wrecked car and hides among the dead bodies, pretending to be dead himself. He holds his breath as the Germans come over and start shooting the soldiers, ensuring none are alive. Danilov somehow survives the assault and waits until they are out of sight to take a rifle from a dead soldier nearby. Upon realizing the rifle is missing ammo, he is approached by Vasily, who had also been pretending to be dead. He hands over his share of ammo to the commissioner and tells him to shoot when an explosion occurs to ensure they aren't discovered. However, Danilov is hesitant because of his lack of skills, so he hands the rifle over to Vasily. Just as another car arrives and the explosion starts, Vasily surprises the commissioner with his excellent marksmanship and takes down all of the enemy snipers. He is so impressed that later, when they reach the headquarters after being rescued, he prints out some pamphlets to spread Vasily's accomplishment. The higher officials of the Red Army realize their defenses are weak because their soldiers are unwilling to sacrifice their lives for the country. This is causing the Soviet forces to weaken, so Chairman Nikita Khrushchev steps in to rebuild the defense system. He demands his subordinates' ideas to reevaluate their strategies, but all he gets are the same old strategies, until Danilov suggests that they should deliver hope and present a hero who shall inspire everyone to protect their motherland. Taken aback by this, Khrushchev asks if the commissioner will be able to do so. Danilov Danilov recommends Vasily and gets permission to print his heroic tales in the military newspaper. Right after, Vasily's skills are recognized and he is transferred to the sniper division. Soon, the tale of his heroic deed reaches people all over the country, making him the face of the Russian army as well as a propaganda icon. Consequently, the Russian sniper has taken quite a toll on the Germans as they go as far as to deploy Major Irvin Koenig, a renowned marksman and head of an army sniper school in Germany in order to kill Vasily. One day, while Vasily is on a mission, he meets a young boy named Sacha, who, like every other citizen, admires him. Sacha invites him to his home, where Danilov brings him letters from his fans, which he has to reply to. A while later, a woman named Tanya enters the house. She is a soldier from the local militia, who is like family to the Filipovs. Vasily remembers that he had seen her on the train on his way to Stalingrad, and hopes she remembers him too. However, he is disappointed when she only recognizes him as the war hero. His crush thinks he's a badass. Poor guy. As the group chats, it is obvious that both Danilov and Vasily take an interest in her. Danilov even offers her a job in the headquarters to decipher German codes after finding out that she is fluent in German. Although hesitant, Tanya takes the job when she realizes that she can save a lot of soldiers by doing so. 
The next day, Vasily is deployed to a former department store where an enemy sniper is causing trouble for the Soviet army. When he reaches there, he spots a shadow near the window and shoots it dead. Confident in his skills, he then takes Ludmila, a comrade, to go inside and check, only to find out that it was a decoy to lure them in. In addition, Vasily finds a blunt of a cigarette and deduces that the sniper is still inside. Suddenly, several planes fly past the area, bombing the buildings and making Ludmila panic. Vasily tries to calm her down, but she hastily makes a run for it. As a result, the enemy sniper, Koenig, easily spots her and shoots her to death. In the following scene, we see him return to his hideout, where he gets his shoes cleaned by Satya. The kid gives him information about Vasily in return for food. After the Red Army learns of Koenig's purpose, they hire Kulikov, Koenig's former student, to help Vasily. Vasily, Kulikov, and Volodya, a member of the sniper team, go into an abandoned building that has a body set up to look like it is the enemy sniper. Assuming it's a trap, they believe they are on the right track and move to a different area. The enemy fires at them, but they luckily manage to reach the safe area without getting hit. And after marking two guys, they get ready for dinner. Volodya runs to get the soup that he left in the other room, but gets captured by the enemy in the process. When he refuses to reveal Vasily's whereabouts, he is dressed in a German uniform and sent disguised as their repairman. Without any hesitation, Kulikov shoots him, purposely revealing their location. He then raises a helmet as a decoy for Koenig to shoot and reveal his location as well. However, Koenig gets a hint of what they are up to and doesn't fall for the trap, making them relocate in a hurry. Just as they are moving to a different place, Koenig kills Kulikov, undermining Vasily's spirit. Regardless of the several deaths it has caused, Khrushchev keeps pressuring Danilov to continue the sniper face-off. In addition, Tanya asks him to transfer her back to the militia. When Vasily returns dispirited, Danilov promises him that they will get more intel on Koenig and asks him to make Tanya stay in the headquarters. As requested, Vasily tries to convince her and learns that her parents were among the prisoners executed by the Germans. So, she wants to join the militia and fight. He understands her choices and gives her Kulikov's rifle, supporting her decision. At the hideout, Koenig gets his shoe cleaned by Sacho once again. That little boy loves shoes, while inquiring about Vasily's whereabouts. The following day, he waits for Vasily at the location Sacha provided, eagerly anticipating his arrival. After a while, Vasily and his comrades stealthily make their way through the pipes, alerting Koenig to their presence. As soon as they emerge from the pipe, Koenig swiftly takes his shot, causing Vasily to drop his rifle and hide behind a rock. He forces his comrade to return to the headquarters, because his hand is injured. His his return alerts Tanya and Danilov of the situation, and without thinking twice, Tanya goes to rescue Vasily. At the end of the pipe, Vasily constantly makes efforts to pull his weapon with the help of a knife and a rope, but Koenig gives him no chance. Just then, a bombing shakes the whole building, and pieces of glass shatter everywhere, which gives Koenig a clear view of Vasily. Subsequently, Tanya enters through the pipe, but Vasily yells at her to stay back. He shows her Koenig's location on the same glass, through which he is being watched and instructs her to reflect light with another piece of glass. Tanya effectively does her task, blinding the enemy for a second. Vasily takes the chance to pick up his weapon and manages to shoot Koenig's hand before both parties retreat. Later, in the evening, Vasily and Tanya celebrate the small victory with other comrades. The following day, Vasily tells Danilov that he wants to be a regular soldier because both Koenig and the title of a war hero have weighed him down. Danilov doesn't accept it and manipulates him using Sacha, revealing that he has been working as a double agent. Through the kid, they now know the exact location Koenig is in and Vasily is tasked to a final mission. In the following scene, we see him camouflage with the dead bodies on the ground, remaining idle just like his grandfather taught him. The scene of the day he learned to hunt plays before his eyes as he waits for Koenig. Eventually, he dozes off and his sniper log is stolen by a looting German officer. The German command takes the log as evidence of Vasily's death and plans to send Koenig home as the Soviet propaganda will benefit if he gets murdered. Amidst all of this, Koenig is 100% sure that Vasily is still alive. Then, the headquarters announces Vasily's death through loudspeakers, sending the troop into chaos. Meanwhile, in an attempt to catch Vasily, Koenig tells Sacha his next location, believing that the kid will surely bring the information to the enemy. 
Somewhere else, with no hint of Vasily's return, Danilov starts writing an announcement of his death, while the protagonist surprises everyone by appearing out of nowhere. He soon finds out through Sacha that Tanya went to the station to attempt to kill Koenig on her own. Vasily and Danilov go to rescue her in a hurry, and luckily find her safe. Happy to see Vasily alive, Tanya plants a kiss on his lips, which in turn makes Danilov a jealous little boy. Forgetting his responsibility towards his troop, he returns to headquarters and writes that Vasily has become a traitor. Meanwhile, Koenig, whose suspicions have now been cleared, kills Sacha and hangs him for Vasily and Tanya to see. An angered Tanya wants to avenge his death, but Vasily vows to kill Koenig for her and sends her to evacuate Sacha's mother. Danilov and Tanya don't know how to break it to Miss Filipov, so they lie to her that Sacha has joined the Germans. She hopes that her son is still safe and decides to escape with the special pass given by Danilov. While trying to get on the boat, a bomb explodes and hurts Tanya, making her fall unconscious. The doctor has no hopes of her surviving, so he doesn't let her into the boat. Mrs. Filipov, however, convinces the personnel that Tanya is her daughter and shows them the pass before they allow her to board. Somewhere else, an oblivious Danilov finds Vasily and shares the tragic news of Tanya's death, burdening himself with guilt. Overwhelmed with regret, he blames himself and decides to give up on life by exposing himself to Koenig. The sniper wastes no time in shooting him, thus giving away his own position. In a surprise, rising turn of events, Koenig approaches cautiously, expecting victory, but is met with surprise when he sees Vasily waiting for him. Accepting his fate, Koenig lets Vasily shoot him and dies in the encounter. After the chaos ends, Vasily retrieves his rifle and places it beside Danilov's lifeless body as a sign of respect. Two months later, when Stalingrad has been freed from the Germans, Vasily receives a letter from Tanya that she is recovering at the field hospital. Eager to see her again, he visits the address mentioned in the letter, and the movie ends as we witness a heartfelt reunion between the two. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.